the book of Proverbs. As you look at 1 Kings 3, 5 through 15, we notice here that it says, And Gideon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. So God is asking uh, Solomon what he should give him. What do you really want in life, I suppose you could say it that way. Well, Solomon said, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. And then God uh, replied there in verse 12, he said, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart so that there was none like thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. So when we're reading Proverbs, we are reading uh, words from God, wise uh, sayings that are godly sayings. And so keep that in mind as we go through this. It is to make us, you can think of it as making us a better Christian as we study uh, the book of Proverbs. Because if we apply the things that are written therein uh, and apply that to our life, there are many uh, good things, good takeaways from that. Uh, Solomon was a third king over Israel. Uh, he ruled there for 40 years. And uh, he was also celebrated for wisdom and for building the temple uh, of the Lord in Jerusalem. So uh, so keep that in mind as we go through. Uh, it, all this information that we're reading is from God. Uh, it, it was given to uh, Solomon and uh, given to him as wisdom. Uh, here on the next screen we see uh, some key phrases. One of the key phrases is the fear of the Lord. Uh, that is uh, mentioned, you can see how many times uh, in the Bible there, 14 in Proverbs, 1 in 1 Samuel, 2 Chronicles 4, times job was one time psalms three times isaiah three times and there in acts 9 31 as well uh, in the new testament so when you think about the word fear uh, fear is meaning reverence or respect so as we study these words uh, these wise sayings from god and from uh, from solomon we need to have respect for those things we respect those things then we will do those things. Look at uh, Acts 9 and 31. Acts 9 and 31, it says, There then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified, and they were walking in the fear of the Lord. And so that's the idea. They were walking in reverence of the Lord. Uh, they uh, had reverence for the thing he says and tried to do those things. And uh, as we read the words of Solomon, there's a lot of practical advice spiritual advice. Uh, some of the things are called sins, as we'll see as we study through that. Uh, and, and as we go through it, there, you, you can look at, at, at the words of Proverbs and you can find out how to be wise. He'll tell us how to be wise and, and then he'll tell us, like, you can be foolish too. And these are examples of being foolish. These are examples of being wise. And so he will go through, uh, there'll be all of that, full of it in Proverbs, wise choices and foolish choices. Uh, Proverbs 3, 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. Sometimes that, that's what we do. We lean on, to, lean on our own understanding and we don't trust in the Lord. And so as we read Proverbs, let's trust in what he has to say, trust the, the wise things that he has to say, and lean not on what we think and what we uh, think we understand. And it goes on in, in verse 7, Be not wise in thine own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. So uh, what we think is wise is probably not wise. So just do what the Lord says. Uh, have reverence to what he said. And uh, that will be uh, better from there. Okay, let's look at uh, the next screen. Uh, here we see Proverbs. Uh, you can see it divided into two sections. There's uh, the fool, it, it'll be described, and you'll see the wise man described. Uh, here, I didn't write how many times on each one of these, but uh, in the, the, the foolish man is spoken of 26 times in Proverbs. Uh, wicked is to, spoken of 86 times. Uh, Self-confident, 50 times. Lazy, 15 times. Evil or bad or moral is spoke of 47 times. Uh, simple or naive, 14 times. So you can see in, in, in Proverbs, we're going to learn how, how not to be wicked, not to be foolish, not to be lazy, not self-confident. I mean, there's lots of things that the, the, in the rest of the summer series that you can learn about in Proverbs that will help you uh, in your Christian life. These, 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 these ideas, these, these uh, 
the mindset that, that he had, it, it goes on to the New Testament. As we'll look through it, some of the same scriptures in Proverbs, the same ideas mentioned in the New Testament. So we're, when, as we study this, I like to bring in some New Testament scriptures uh, so we can see that. Now, we're not just studying uh, the Old Testament. A lot of people say, well, it don't apply to us. But it does because those principles are still carried forward. Okay, let's look at the wise men for a second. The wise men is spoken of, spoken of 97 times. Uh, the wise men having knowledge 73 times. Uh, he has understanding 49 times. Uh, considered of others 32 times. Righteous 87 times. They guard their words and their tongues and their lips 103 times. Uh, you know, if you're, you're going to speak of how our tongue, lips can say the wrong things, that in our tongue, uh, it's mentioned a lot of times, 103. All right, let's look at the next screen here. So we're, as we go through Proverbs, we, and really as we go through life, we need to learn how to make wise or, or decisions. And so if you read Proverbs and really study it, it could probably answer most of your questions and most of uh, how to make a right choice or how to make uh, a how foolish choice. And we probably do that a lot more uh, than what we think. Uh, there it says on the screen, making the right choice is vital because judgment for man comes from the Lord. We're going to be judged by the thing we say, the things we do, whether a lot of these wise decisions are, are based on uh, godly attributes, being, being godly, being holy. And so uh, we need to keep that in mind as we study this. It, it can make us uh, better Christians, I guarantee you, if you uh, follow these things written here uh, in Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs 29, 26, as you notice there on the bottom of the screen, many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Uh, and then there in Proverbs 3, 5 to 8, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean on to your own understanding. We already read, uh, and he shall direct thy path. So we need to make the right choices. And we can make the right choices if we study uh, God's word, study Proverbs. All right, so let's get into a friend. That's where we're going to study tonight. And it's, they're kind of spread out all over Proverbs, and they'll be on the screen that you can kind of uh, try to follow along. Okay, so a friend. Many times uh, we compare ourselves to others and judging their qualities. And I used to have a lot of problems with this. Uh, as I was growing up, I would, I would judge myself to someone, well, I'm better than them, so I must be okay. But that, that we're comparing ourselves to the wrong person, first of all, because we need to compare ourselves to Christ. Uh, and as we study Proverbs, and I hope not only this lesson, but in the future summer series, in the future lessons that you study Proverbs, we need to look inwardly. We're not looking to see what everybody else is, is doing wrong or what everybody else uh, ha and comparing ourselves to others, but we're looking inward, reflecting on our own behaviors. Uh, so that is what we need to make sure we focus on every single time you come uh, to worship on Wednesdays and study uh, during this summer series. Uh, we need to rather work on ourselves rather than worrying about what others are doing. Uh, we need to be more like Christ. Am I a good friend? Am I a good neighbor? And we need to ask ourselves that as we go through this lesson. And we'll close as it, with the invitation. We'll ask some of those questions. Uh, we need to examine our own actions and attitudes. Uh, our attitudes can make us say the wrong thing. They uh, can make us our actions be wrong. Uh, and we need to see and identify areas where we can improve and strive to be better versions of ourselves. I was kind of hoping you might have the book, so on the sides, maybe you could put some notes there. I need to improve in this area. Uh, I need to improve my attitude here. And maybe that'd be good to take some notes and, and where can you improve? Uh, what, what do I need to focus on inwardly uh, for myself? Uh, last little point on this screen, it says we can take ownership of our own behavior and work towards being kind of a person we would want as a friend or neighbor? Are you a person that somebody wants to have as a neighbor or a friend? And that's a good question to ask, and we'll look at that a little bit further as we go through. Next screen here, we have a list of, of our verses in Proverbs. So we're going to start with the being a good neighbor, being a good friend. Remember, friend, neighbor, if we read it in Scripture, it's the same word uh, in Hebrew and Greek there. So... Um, we need to, uh, it's important, first of all, that we need to avoid 
despising evil or spreading strife. Uh, so think of conflicts with friends that you might have. Look at Proverbs 3 and verse 29. Proverbs 3 and 29 will be the first one. Devise not evil against thy neighbor or thy friend, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. So a good neighbor does not intentionally create conflict. He's not going to create problems between uh, two friends. He's going to try to to keep from having problems, seek to foster harmony and peace uh, between friends and between, between their neighbors. So think about in the New Testament, what would a scripture be good to kind of go along with this idea? Devise not evil against thy neighbor. Look at 1 Timothy 3 and verse 7. 1 Timothy 3 and verse 7. Uh, Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. So this is speaking of elders here. The elder is supposed to have good report of the community, of people outside the church. So uh, that would be kind of the same idea. Matthew 5, 16. Probably have that memorized. Let your light so shine before men. Well, if you're showing evil or creating evil out in the world to your neighbors or your friends, is that shining the light of Jesus? No. No, it would not be. Okay, so let's look at the next one here. Proverbs 25, 8 through 10. Proverbs 25, 8 through 10. It says here, Go not forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end. Thereof, when thy neighbor hath put thee to shame, debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself, and discover not a secret to another, lest he that heareth it be put to shame, and thine infamy turn not away. So how many of us like to go uh, tell a friend about a secret that somebody else had told us, or something that's going on with this friend, and we go tell this other friend, uh, gossiping, you might say. Uh, We need to not do that. That spreads strife. Uh, A good neighbor doesn't participate in gossip or rumors uh, that can damage relationships and reputations. Gossiping of uh, somebody or talking about somebody else and then somebody else finding out, what's that going to do to your relationship with that friend? You don't want to be around somebody like that that's going to spread your uh, things that you struggle with, maybe. Okay, Romans 14, 19, same idea here. Let us therefore follow after things which make for peace and things uh, wherewith one may edify another. If you're talking about somebody else, a friend, is that edifying one another? Or is that uh, making peace with one another? No, it wouldn't be. 1 Thessalonians 5.11. 1 Thessalonians 5.11, same kind of idea here. Wherefore, comfort yourself together, edify one another. So we're, we're trying to build each other up. We want to all go to heaven. And we don't want to be tearing people down uh, and treating them, uh, talking around people's back and everything. Okay, let's look at the next one. Proverbs 24, 17. Proverbs 24, 17. Here it says, Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. You know, how many of us like to watch America's Funniest Home Videos? It's hilarious sometimes. We laugh at people that fall on their face and they do something, they're do something. they doing something stupid. Maybe we shouldn't laugh at that. But it, sometimes, I mean, and just think of your enemy. That's, that's just something on TV. But think about your enemy, somebody that you struggle with, and you laugh because they had a wreck or something like that. Well, they deserved it or so, whatever. So we need to be careful uh, wanting our enemy uh, to fall or to stumble. Uh, so let's look at the next verse here. Proverbs 25, 21 uh, says, If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. Well, that's a different idea. Instead of laughing at him for doing something, we're going to go feed him bread or, or give him water. Uh, maybe he's on the side of the road. I, I don't know, whatever. But think of the uh, Luke 10, uh, verse uh, 30 and 30 through 37. You remember there, there was a certain man going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among thieves and they stripped him of his raiment, wounded him and they parted and left him in the road dead or half dead, you could say. Well, remember the uh, priest. What did the priest do? He just walked on by, right? What did the Levite do? Well, he just walked on by too. Uh, and what did the Samaritan do? The Samaritan helped him, took him to the hotel uh, bound his wounds, put oil and wine on him, 
put him on his own horse or beast or whatever you want to call it, took care of him. Gave him a place to stay in a hotel. So that's the idea. Not treating our enemy and laughing at our enemy when they, when they fall, but treating our enemy uh, with... Uh, and there at the end, verse 37, it says there he showed mercy on him. Sometimes we need to show a little mercy and compassion uh, for those around us. Okay, let's look at the next one. Proverbs 11 and verse 12. Proverbs 11, verse 12. It says, He that is void of wisdom... Despiseth, despiseth his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. You know, sometimes it's better to be silent than to say something to your neighbor. Uh, it could cause uh, what we've been talking about here. Uh, so when we, ch- when we speak, we need to choose our words very carefully. Because remember, what would Jesus say? I used to be a saying going around. Uh, if he wouldn't say what you just said, then you better not be saying it. You might want to sit on the front pew uh, for a few hours and do some praying on your knees at home by your bed. But uh, anyway, we need to be careful of the words that we say. You remember James 3, 5 through 12, where it talks about the tongue, uh, the tongue being a little member and boasts great things? Well, it can also uh, be like the devil talking, Okay. So we need to be careful. He compares there in, in James, he compares, uh, he says that in verse 10, it says, Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. We, we shouldn't be in church and singing praises to God on Sunday and then out cursing our neighbor uh, some of the other times during the week. Uh, he compares that to a, a, a fountain. You're going to get bitter water and sweet water out of a fountain? No, it's all going to be the same water. What about uh, the fig tree? You're going to have uh, olive berries or or figs on the same tree? No, they're going to yield uh, the same thing. You're going to have salt water and fresh coming out uh, in the ocean. No, it's just going to be going to be salt water. So we got to be careful what we say. Uh, Look at the next one: Proverbs 14 and 21. Proverbs 14, 21. So here we see, he that despiseth his neighbor sinneth. Oh, now we're getting, uh, we're stepping on our toes a little bit, I suppose, because now it can be a sin uh, compared to what we do to our neighbor. But he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. Proverbs 21 10, the soul of the wicked desireth evil, his neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes. Um, you know, we've we got to be compassionate and understanding towards those uh, that have fallen short. Think of the, the priest or uh, the Levite. Or, uh, how did the guy end up in that situation? Uh, what about the Samaritan? Did a, He had compassion. So we just got to be careful as we go through life and make sure we help where we, where we can. Uh, okay, next one. Proverbs 22, 25. Uh, Proverbs 22, 25. There it says, uh, Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. So we shouldn't be overbalanced or too much sentimentality. We need to be careful. Let's look at the next one. Proverbs 6, 1 through 5. Uh, Proverbs 6, 1 through 5. I tried to look up some of these words. It's kind of confusing to me, this section of scriptures. But uh, here it says, My son, if thou be surety, and I believe that surety is like a pledge or agreement for thy friend. So maybe you're having a, uh, an agreement with a friend. If thou hast stricken, hit him, as far as I understand, thy hand with a stranger. Thou art snared, like setting a trap, with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken or captured with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the, the hand of thy friend, go, humble thyself, and make sure, strengthen thy friend. Uh, give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself uh, as a roe from the hand of a hunter and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. So how important, if we have a problem with our friend, our neighbor, how important is, is, it, is he saying here, wisdom is going to go humble yourself and you're going to go strengthen your friend now. Don't wait. Uh, we need to do that now. The, Matthew 5, 9, I thought of here. Matthew 5, 9, blessed are the peacemakers. So those that are going to go to their friend with there's a problem right then, go nip it in the bud, take care of it right then. 
uh, that, that's making peace. Because if you, if you leave time for your friend to go talk to somebody else or for you to go talk to somebody else, that's not going to bring peace. Remember, we talked about that in the beginning. Uh, so let's sum it up with a verse in Colossians 3, 12 through 15. Colossians 3, 12 to 15. It says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. That's just all of these verses all summed up in the New Testament in one set of verses. Uh, forgiving one another. If you have any quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave ye, uh, so also do ye, and above all these things, put on charity or love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. So that kind of sums up uh, this whole. Let's look at the next screen here. Another section of verses, being a good friend, is someone who can be counted on and be dependable and consistent. Are we consistent as we uh, speak to our friends or as we do things for our friends? Um, you know, a friend is somebody who's going to stick with you whether uh, you have trouble or whether you don't have trouble, through thick and thin. And so as you, oh, what kind of friend are you? When somebody's having trouble, do you like, um, I don't want to see them right now. They're having, they're having some problems. Uh, maybe they're crying a lot, whatever. Do we want to do avoid? Do we avoid them, or do, or do we try to just be there and listen to them and try to be a good friend? Look at uh, Proverbs fourteen twenty and twenty one. Proverbs fourteen twenty and twenty one says, "The poor is hated, even of his own neighbor, but the rich hath many friends. He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth, but he that hath mercy on the poor." Happy is he. So we, we have a comparison here between poor and rich. You know, sometimes we don't want to be around the poor. We want to be around the rich. Maybe they give us things. Uh, we can't be that way. Look at the next verse here. Proverbs 19, 4 through 7. Kind of the same idea. Wealth maketh many friends. How many friends? But whenever it gets time gets tough, do they have many friends? I mean, you've seen many rich people... When the time gets tough, when they lose all their money, they lose all their friends. So they didn't have good friends to start with. But uh, we got to be better than that. Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Many will entreat the favor of the prince, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursueth them with words, yet they are wanting him. Uh, there are Proverbs 18.24. A man ha that hath friends must show himself to be friendly. Oh, I bet we can find some verses in the New Testament like that, right? Luke 6.31. And as ye would that men should do to you, do also to them. So that's, that. I mean, we, we see wise things all through the Bible if we really study it. So if, we're gonna, if we want to be a good friend, if we want to have good friends, then we have to be a good friend. Uh, Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loveth at all times. A brother is born for adversity. So if we're going to be a good friend, we need to love somebody whether it's bad times, whether it's good times. We need to be dependable, a dependable friend, a consistent friend. You know, as we look through these verses, all of these talk about loyalty. They talk about steadfastness in friendships. Uh, a good note I wrote, I underlined it, put it in bold here on my screen. But it says, all, a good friend is not just there during good times, but is also willing to support and help during difficult times. Okay, let's look forward to the New Testament. John 15, 12 to 15. John 15, 12 to 15. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. What did Christ do for us when we sinned? We're, we're not the, the, these perfect people that live on this earth. We need Christ's blood. And, and so we need to be that way as we treat our friend. Love one another as he loved you. Greater love had no man than this than a, a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if, if you do whatever I command you. All right, let's look at the next one. Proverbs 27 and verse 10. Proverbs 27 and 10. Thine own friend... 
And thy father's friend forsake not, neither go into the brother's house in the day of calamity, but better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. Uh, you know, as we think about friends, as we think about neighbors, Galatians 6, 2 comes to mind. Uh, Bear ye one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, uh, sometimes that burden is is having a sin in our life. Be there with that person. Help them uh, come out of that sin. Help them uh, recognize that Jesus died for their sin. And sometimes that burden is doing something for them, helping them. A uh, friend would help each other instead of just leaving somebody to struggle in some way. So a good friend. Uh, let's look at the next one. Proverbs 27 and verse 6. Uh, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Uh, we need to make sure our, our words are, are the right words. Don't create wounds uh, between each other. Look at uh, Proverbs 29.5. A man that flattereth his neighbor... Spread a thing net for his feet. So we need to be careful uh, giving too many compliments. I mean, of course, we want to build somebody up, uh, but uh, be careful there. Uh, Proverbs 28, 23. He that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth uh, with the tongue. So uh, we need to be careful as we uh, look there. Let's look, uh, go on a few, a few. We're going to get run out of time here. Uh, Proverbs 27, 9. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. So doth the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. Uh, we need good friend is very, very important. Thine own friend and thy father's friend forsake not, neither go into the brother's house in a day of thy calamity. For better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. As our as we our friends struggle, as our neighbors struggle, we need to be there uh, close to them. Uh, look at Proverbs 27, 17. Iron sharpeth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. So we can we can help our friends. So let's look at the next one, Proverbs 25, 16 and 17. Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomit. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee, and so hate thee. Proverbs 27, 14, He that blesses his, his friend with a loud voice, rising early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. We see 25, 20, we see it talk about encouraging your friend. Proverbs 26, 18 and 19, don't deceive your friend, even joking with your friend. Uh, so look at James 5, 19 and 20. You know, as we think about our friends, as we think about talking about them, as we think about uh, respecting their feelings. We also have to remember that uh, being uh, brothers and sisters, if somebody errs from the truth, then we got to go talk to him. Uh, we got to go convert him. Let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. So we need, uh, we need to understand that. And we need to understand that we may be on both sides of that. We may be on the side where uh, we are in the error and we may be on the side where we're trying to help a brother. Uh, so we need to be loving as we do that. Matthew 18, 15 through 20 goes along with that. Brother shall trespass against thee. Go tell him his fault. You remember that. Uh, if, if that doesn't work, then you take two or three witnesses, not people you've told the story to and, and uh, gossip to. They don't need to know anything about it. Those two or three need to go with you. And then you can take the church. Go take the whole church over to somebody's house and visit with somebody and talk to them. Tell them you care. Uh, that's very important uh, as we uh, try to help each other uh, through our sins. Let's look at the next screen. How to ruin a good friendship. I wanted to get here because we need to all keep this in mind uh, as we go through life. We don't want to ruin good friendship. First one there is Proverbs 2 and verse 17. I mean, what is, what is how do you ruin a friendship? Look there, betrayal, betraying a friend estrangement, gossip, not forgiving. We don't want to be that way. Look at Proverbs 2.17, which forsaketh the guide of her youth and forgetteth uh, the covenant of her God. Betrayal. Estrangement. Proverbs 16.28, a froward man soweth strife and a whisper separateth chief friends. 
a violent man enticeth his neighbor and leadeth him into the way that is not good. Proverbs 17, 9, He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. Uh, if you're going to repeat something somebody says to somebody else, uh, that's kind of gossiping, and that's going to that's going to hurt your friendship uh, as you go through life, uh, destroy those friendships. Uh, you know, gossip is like a wildfire; it, it sometimes creates irreparable damage to friendships, and so we need to be very careful uh, with that. Now, Proverbs sixteen twenty eight: A froward man soweth strife. A whisperer separateth chief friends. Uh, Proverbs 17, 9, He that cover the transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. Being Not forgiving somebody, you're going to go uh, talk to other people uh, about somebody's sin. I mean, that, a lot of these things, they just destroy friendships if we're not careful. And, and a lot of it has to do with our tongue. Uh, when you start thinking and I, as I was thinking about this, I'm not going to read First Corinthians 13. We're about out of time, but First Corinthians 13. When you, you want to just read First Corinthians 13 about uh, feeding the poor and helping and loving, how to love, how to not envy, uh, and I mean just all of this applies to all these uh, how to ruin a friendship. Don't be like First Corinthians 13 if you want to ruin a friendship because that will. Uh, okay, let's look at a few verses in, from the New Testament here. Uh, and then I think that, yeah, the last, last screen will be the invitation. So here in Matthew seven twelve, we see, Therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So we don't, if we don't treat another friend like we want to be treated, I mean, it, it, I mean you could call that a sin. Uh, we need to treat each other like uh, like Jesus would treat us, or like we, I mean, like we want to be treated. Matthew nineteen nine: Honor thy father and mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Same idea. Uh, remember Matthew twenty two thirty nine: Thou shalt love thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. That's the first great commandment. What was the second one? Love your neighbor as yourself. The whole thing is what we've been talking about here, our friends. Love our friends as thyself. Uh, you remember how to treat a neighbor, Matthew 25? Uh, you remember this set of verses where the Son of Man came in his glory and the holy angels uh, with him and he sat on the uh, throne of glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. He's going to separate one from another as the shepherd divideth his sheep. Um, and then the king's going to say unto the, those on the right hand, Come, ye blessed of the Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was, uh, I mean, you could think of, I was a friend. I was a friend, you could say right here. I, I, I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you, looked, you took me in. I acted like a friend should act. Uh, then shall the righteous say to him, well, when did I see you hungry and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee to drink? When saw we a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison or coming to thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. When you treat your friend like you want to be treated, like a friend should be treated, you're following this set of verses right here. And we know the rest of the story. If you don't act like that, uh, you're going to be going into everlasting punishment. So we need to be good friends. Uh, the next one here, we remember Luke 10, 25, 37. We read that already. Remember the the, uh, the priest and the Levite and the Samaritan? Yeah, so we remember that story. We need to be like that, merciful, uh, helping somebody when they need it. Romans 13, uh, 9 and 10. Mainly there in verse uh, 9 and 10, it says, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. So we need to be careful as we go through life. If we're not loving our neighbor as thyself, uh, if we're doing evil to our, ill to our neighbor, 
Uh, we need, we're not fulfilling the law. We're not uh, doing what we should do. Romans 15, 2. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Maybe somebody's not, they, they, they're not quite strong enough. They're, they're, they're struggling with some sins. Don't laugh at them. Don't go tell everybody else what they've been doing. Bear the infirmities. Help them. Be a friend to them. Listen to them. Uh, Galatians 5.14 uh, For the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We see that over and over. Galatians 6.10 As we have therefore opportunity, what does it say here? You remember that verse? Let us do good unto all men. Is that our friends? Yeah, that's our friends. That's our enemies too. Especially unto them who are of the house of the faith. If you're treating a Christian, uh, some other way than, than the way a friend should treat, you're not treating them the right way. We need to be uh, good friends. Let's finish with James 2, 8 and 9. Here it says, If ye fulfill the royal law according to the Scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressions. So in conclusion, as you, as you think about this, uh, when we'll talk more about this in the invitation here in a second, but the New Testament teaches us that loving our neighbor and our friend is not optional. It's not optional. It's a sin if we don't treat our, our neighbor and our friends like uh, we should. That's a sin. We need to think about that. And that's why, why I said as we study this lesson, we need to find ways to improve ourselves as a friend. Uh, and the rest we'll talk about here in a moment in the invitation as we close. Do something about it. We need to repent and pray to God. We need to go to our friend and talk to our friend and uh, apologize to them uh, for maybe the way that we have have acted or done some things that we've done you know today as i was driving down the truck i was i was uh thinking of something that i wanted to do to my neighbor and it wasn't it was along these same lines and so as i'm talking to you today and talking to you about friends it's like we all need to be careful uh the way we treat our friends uh, and i i was got to drive as i was driving on the uh on the uh, in the car it's like oh i'm fixing to preach about that tonight i better straighten up but uh but we need to look at ourselves inwardly and uh, a note here i wrote as you can see it on the screen it says let us seek to love and serve others building them up and reflecting the love and glory of our savior jesus christ you know as we go through our life the way we treat our friends is it reflecting the glory of jesus christ if somebody looks at you as a friend, do they see Jesus Christ in your life? Do they even recognize you as a Christian? Those are important questions as we think. Along the same lines, these three verses up there, you probably recognize those. It all talks about uh, God being an, leaving us an example. And we need to be more like Jesus. Look at 1 Peter 2.21. Says, for even there unto ye were called, because Christ also suffered for us. What did he do? He leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. We'll not go to the cross and be crucified like him, but act like he did while he was here on this earth, showing the love and the compassion that he showed to his friends and to his neighbors, to his disciples, to those that, that, were, that hated him. Look at the people that, that, how did he treat those that, that put him on the cross, those soldiers? 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am, am, am of Christ. So as we look at Paul, we can, we can follow Paul's example as we look through the New Testament. He's trying to follow Christ's example. So if we're following what Paul said, if we're trying to be like him, then we're going to be like Christ. Last one here, 1 John 2, 3 to 6. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. 
Hereby, we, uh, hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk. Look at that last little three little words, four little words, even as he walked. We need to be like Christ. And if we're, if we're not a friend that would be like Christ, if we're not, we're not treating a friend, take care of that today. Don't go to sleep. I hope it bothers you all night if you don't call your friend and tell him you're sorry. Talk to your brother. Talk to your, your enemy. Talk to your neighbor. Whatever it is, get those things taken care of. Maybe this today we didn't talk about baptism or repentance. Anything. Well, that was repentance. But, well, but if you haven't been baptized for the remission of your sins, why not take care of that today? Why not become a Christian and, and walk like Christ, and be a good friend, and walk like, like Christ walked. We must confess that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God. We must repent of our sins. We must be baptized for the remission of our sins. And you know what? After we repent, and we confess, and we're baptized, what's available but the blood of Jesus Christ was shed on the cross to wash away our sins? Maybe whatever your need may be, if, if you uh, need to come forward for the prayers of the church or if you need to uh, be baptized for the, uh, for the remission of your sins, please do as so as we stand and sing.